Taco Fall has been one of the most talked about prospects in the lead up to the 2019 NBA draft. After all, Taco has received great attention since his high school days when he went viral due to his freakish body. But until taking on Zion Williamson and Duke in the NCAA tournament this past March, Taco has been a bit under the radar the past few years. After committing to UCF out of high school, Fall has steadily improved each season with the Golden Knights. In 2017, after his sophomore campaign, Fall was named American Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Fall also displayed his efficiency, ranking second nationally in field goal percentage. After an injury plagued junior season, Fall finished his college career with a bang, earning third team all conference honors as a senior. Still, despite his solid statistics, I, along with many other analysts, were extremely skeptical of Fall's NBA potential. We've seen many giants over the years in college basketball, but they never seem to, to make it at the next level. Players such as Mamadou Njai and Sim Bular. Foolishly, I loaned to fall into that same category and didn't treat him as a real prospect. Yet that all changed when I actually watched him play. Truthfully, the first time I watched Fall play a full college game was the last game of his career against Duke in the NCAA tournament. I was interested in watching him from simply a freak show perspective and didn't put on my draft evaluating glasses at all. But when I observed the game, I couldn't not help but notice the taco fall might be actually good. See, here's the thing. In theory, everybody thinks that having a freakishly tall player out there on the court would be awesome. Like, you think that a giant would protect the rim and not allow the other team to score. But almost all the time, that's not the case. At all. Freakishly tall guys almost always have no coordination, skill, or lateral quickness. As a result, they end up hurting their team more than they help. Most of the time, their teams are better without them than on the court. Yet with Taco, the exact opposite happened, in a dramatic fashion. UCF was way better with Fall on the court. Without him, they struggled, but with him, they dominated the top-rated Blue Devils. The following is an excerpt from Roger Sherman's article in The Ringer that shows Fall's effect on the game. Quote, Fall changed the game on defense. Normally, Duke is a team that scores well inside. On the year, they shot 57.9% inside the arc, 4th best in Division 1, and struggled massively from outside. They shot 30.7% from 3, 329th best in Division 1. There are only 353 teams. Fall only blocked 3 shots, but it altered shots and forced Duke to operate much farther from the rim than they're typically comfortable with. They shot just 20 for 42 from 2, just the 4th time this year the Blue Devil shot worse than 50% from inside the arc with Williamson in the lineup. At the same time, Fall converted on his shots near the rim, picking up numerous rebounds on both ends of the floor along the way. While UCF's upset bid felt devastatingly short, Taco certainly opened up some eyes. Well, at least my eyes. For me, what really struck a chord with me was his intelligence and coordination. While he's obviously not very fleet of foot, he was not awful moving laterally and had decent touch around the rim. But most importantly, he was a smart player. He knew how to use verticality to contest shots. He made the best college basketball player in a decade look exceedingly human. Fall was an all-encompassing defensive force. After the conclusion of his senior year, Fall was named one of 80 participants, 40 representing the NBA draft hopefuls, for the inaugural NBA G League Elite Camp. At the event, Fall impressed greatly, earning one of 11 invitations to the big NBA draft combine. During the combine, he put up new records at the event, including height, wingspan, and standing reach. He measured in at 7 feet 7 with an 8 feet 2 wingspan and 10 foot 2 standing reach. Yet again, it was not as absurd measurements that caught my attention. It was his play during the 5 on 5 scrimmages. He was legitimately one of the best players on the court. I mean, he controlled the games. He was a dominant defensive force. The other team simply could not score when he was on the court. He made many big time prospects look bad. So, let's go a little bit more in depth about what makes Taco actually good. You have to start by acknowledging the obvious. Fall is perhaps the biggest basketball player in the world, and he uses his size well on the court. His presence in the lane is unmistakable, as he towers over opposing players and can play with his hands up at the rim without jumping. I mean, there are reports that he's one of the 15 tallest people in the world, like in general, not just basketball players. And you know, on defense, he alters a ton of shots and forces the offense out of the lane. He does a good job of going vertical and using his length without fouling. He knows his role as a defender, rim protector, and rebounder. Fall absolutely swallows opposing players at the rim. His 11.5% block rate in his senior year was right up there with the very best shot blockers in the country and was only the second best rate of his collegiate career after an astronomical 12.8% block rate in his freshman campaign. 
He doesn't always react quickly to drivers or other threats at the rim, but his length will consistently allow him to get back into plays. On the offensive side, he gets a lot of putbacks and easy buckets in the lane, leading to an outstanding field goal percentage in the high 70s. While he lacks post moves, he does show decent hands and some promise to develop his back to the basket game. For a man as large as Fall is, he's also surprisingly deft with his movements. Though he often doesn't have it in him to make a second movement after the first, he gets beat to defensive rebounds after contesting a shot to the rim. He's more agile than a lot of players his size and can usually make a single slide with a guard. So don't ask him to slide twice or change direction after doing so. His long strides cover a ton of ground, but he's not going to be quick enough to defend very often outside the paint. So, what's the verdict on Taco? What's his role in the NBA? Is there even a place for him? Well, there's absolutely a place for Fall on an NBA roster. I recognize that he has very obvious, significant flaws. His little upside to be a team starting center in an increasingly small ball league. But as a reserve in limited minutes, his size will be problematic for opposing teams. I also think it would be very interesting for his NBA team to experiment with a zone with Fall in the middle and four perimeter players funneling the ball toward him, much like he did at UCF. There will certainly be games and matchups in the NBA that make it impossible to play Taco. We know his limitations, but we also know that in the right circumstances he can have a seismic impact on the game. At the very most he can only play 15-20 to 20 minutes per game, but those minutes could be dominant for his team. I think Fall is absolutely worth a mid-second round pick. Personally, I would consider taking him in the, even the late first or even early second. He's got natural gifts that you can't teach, and he's got the work ethic and intellect needed for him to maximize his potential. Taco Fall is legit. Comment down below, what are your thoughts on Taco Fall? Who do you think is the most underrated draft prospect? Share the video with your friends and leave a like if you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at RespectThePoint. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.